Hello again, and welcome back to another edition of the Wiccan Conservative. So, after the time changes, do you feel less productive at work? After the time changes, do you feel like your heart can just beat out of your chest? Or are you more prone to get hurt at work? Well, apparently, you're not alone. According to independent.co, the Monday after the time change can throw some people off. According to a Pennsylvania State University study, workers spend more time than normal on the Monday after the time change surfing the internet for non-work related content. Cardiac patients should also take note, according to the University of Colorado, Apparently, acute myocardial infarctions increase up to 24% on that Monday, and the Journal of Applied Psychology published that workplace injuries have increased on the Monday after daylight savings time from 1983 to 2006. So... I guess you guys didn't really realize how detrimental daylight savings time was to your health. Don't worry, the government is all over that. The Senate has voted on Tuesday to make daylight savings time permanent in the U.S. starting in 2023. This bill, called the Sunshine Protection Act, was passed by unanimous consent. That means no senators opposed it. So, if enacted, this measure would mean that Americans no longer need to change their clocks twice a year. For those who don't know, daylight savings time started in the U.S. in 1918 as a way to create more daylight hours during warmer months. It was extended by four weeks starting in 2007. States are not required to follow daylight savings time, and Hawaii and most of Arizona do not observe it. Those are not the only states that do not observe it. Georgia, in fact, passed legislation last year that would effectively end daylight savings time for us as well. So regardless of this measure that got passed in the Senate, we were going to start to do it here in Georgia. But you're probably asking yourself, okay, We did this so that we could get some more sunlight hours, but really, where did this come from? Since this is so detrimental to our health, where did this come from? Time zones were introduced by the major railroad companies in 1883 to resolve confusion and avoid train crashes caused by different time locales. As the United States entered World War I in 1918, the government delegated time zone supervision to the federal organization in charge of the railroad regulation, the Interstate Commerce Commission. The new concept of DST was also overseen by the ICC to assist in the war effort. Initially introduced by Germany during the war to conserve fuel and power by extending daylight hours, the United States soon followed suit. So a lot of people will tell you that this is the main reason why we started changing our clocks. But our obsession with timekeeping goes back farther than that. According to ancientorigins.net, a history of timekeeping, man's obsession with time, from our humble hunter-gatherer beginnings to the most advanced of our ancient civilizations, the sun and moon have always held particular fascination for humanity. Several forms of tools, monuments, and mechanisms have been created to determine dates, seasons, and keep the time. However, the specific reasons for this innate need to understand the concept of time still evades us. From sundials and ancient tally marks on 30,000-year-old sticks to intricate water clocks used in the ancient civilizations of Europe and the Far East, up until the clock as we know it today, The pursuit of accurate timekeeping has been one of the ultimate goals for mankind. Moon phases have held a particular fascination for humanity since the Paleolithic era and possibly even before. Studying the moon helped early humans understand the seasons, when to harvest berries and fruits, 
when to migrate, and when to hunt animals. And these signs of timekeeping can be tracked all the way back to the first tools that we have discovered through archaeology. So although modern DST has only been used for about 100 years, ancient civilizations are known to have engaged in comparable practices thousands of years ago. For example, the Roman water clocks used different scales for different months of the year to adjust the daily schedules to solar time. Now that daylight savings time is used in over 70 countries worldwide and affects over 1 billion people a year, the beginning and end dates vary from one country to another. The first atomic clock measured time based on vibrations within ammonia and later cesium atoms. The new standard time redefined the second in 1967 the second was redefined as so many oscillations of the radiation associated with a particular energy transition in the cesium atom. So we're no longer even using the moon and the sun as positioning tools to tell us where we are in the Earth's rotation. We are using vibrations and energy atoms. Most of these atoms would be considered very accurate for keeping time. But this is the last article that I have for you from sciencenews.org. On April 21st, 2015 at 11 a.m., the world's best timepiece just got better. The new atomic clock described in April 21st, Nature Communications, is about three times as precise as its record-setting predecessor, the first atomic clock that relied on the vibrations of ammonia and cesium atoms. The clock, which builds off that earlier prototype, would not lose or gain a second in roughly 15 billion years, which they're very impressed with and very happy. But raising it just two centimeters off its surface would perceptibly change its ticking rate due to the slightly weaker pull of the Earth's gravitational field. Now, knowing what we know about the constant movement of the tectonic plates, how are we to believe that this clock is going to remain in precisely the same location that it's in and nothing's going to move underneath of it, even with the vibration being a more quote-unquote accurate clock it still leaves a lot of room for error, which is why the ancient generations relied upon the position of the astrological bodies in the sky as opposed to what we were perceiving here on Earth. And another thing that I want to throw out there for you guys is the way that the Earth rotates as it continues its path around the sun we already know that the sun hits certain parts of the world before it hits other parts of the world. And it's going to be a different time in different areas based upon where the sun is hitting on the earth. So we think that this is going to make our lives easier and that the negative effects of the time change can be overtaken by eliminating the time change altogether. But I really don't think that that's what the problem is. And moving away from paying attention to the way that our Earth interacts with the rest of the planetary bodies, I don't think is going to end up working out in our favor. And if we continue to neglect the fact that we must find a way to coexist in this universe together with the, the, the rest of the planetary bodies, we will have more issues, I believe, coming into the future. And it will start with the time. It will start with feeling disoriented. And it will eventually trickle down to where we are out of sync with nature. 
and that we are out of sync with our surroundings. But that's all I have for you guys today. I will catch you on the next one.